It was so good to be together this afternoon with friends, old and new, and to greet one another in the name of Christ. As we gather today, we are celebrating All Saints Day, and we are also celebrating Holy Communion. If you have not brought elements from home, we do have elements available at the registration table to my left, and you may get, secure those uh, elements there. And if you don't want to get up and get them, if you raise your hand, one of our ushers will bring them to you, either now or closer to the time. We're so glad that, glad that you chose to be here with us today. If you turn and look to the back of the parking lot, which may not seem like the back at all, you'll see over there in the corner, Terrence Goodwin, our new Director of Children and Family Ministries. He's been with us about two months now. And he's got some great little goodie bags over there for our children. And uh, I'm not gonna give an age limit, just in case. Uh, but you, he's got some goodie bags for them. And our children, we're inviting them to go by and meet with him. I think earlier I saw Mac and Wall here with us too, and she's our director of youth ministry. She's been here with some of our youth throughout the, the day. And of course, last weekend did a super uh, supply drive for our upcoming Sunday dinner, for which we're most thankful to them, to her and to our youth. As we continue to, um, to worship together in these unusual times, our outdoor services will continue on November the 15th, on December the 6th, and December the 20th. Um, if we are not in-person worship by Christmas Eve, we will have two services for uh, Christmas Eve outdoors in the parking lot at 12 and at 4. And so we are already planning our next month's services in case we are not able to go back to in-person worship. Of course, our hope is that we will be able to continue to bind one another in love in all kinds of ways through our virtual worship experiences, our online Sunday school and studies, even if we cannot gather in person except here in our outdoor space. If you notice to the right, you will also see um, a sign that says, love your neighbor, no exceptions, no exclusions. This is a wonderful way for us to carry our message of love into our community. We are, our racial justice action team is, is selling those for $10 a piece. You can also purchase a face mask that has our Washington Street logo on it, if you would like one. And I think they are $5, Jane, yes, $5. And we are selling these not to raise money, but simply to uh, raise awareness of who we are and how we are engaging our community through different ways, even in the midst of a pandemic. And we're so grateful because you are the people who are helping us to engage our community through our ministries of the soup cellar, the Sunday dinner. Our upcoming one is on November the 8th. And as we continue to live together in love and in witness in our community to who Christ is in our lives, and in the world. As we worship throughout the day, you will hear wonderful words of stories and you'll share memories of loved ones, I'm sure, that have passed away during this, this uh, time since last year. And we are celebrating All Saints Day with this beautiful cross, with the lighted candles, and of course with our sacrament of Holy Communion, through which we celebrate the communion of the saints and the blessed memory of those who have gone before us into the church triumphant. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let us remember that wherever we are, we are one in Christ Jesus. Let us worship the Lord. recognize our saints who joined the church triumphant this year. Priestly Jet Wary, 
Carol Hutto Clements, Dr. Andrew J. Whitaker, Helen Thompson McWhorter, Thelma Charles Clark, James Jim M. Davis Sr., Dr. Ronald Truman Farrar, Bobby Jean Bowers, Walter A. Tootin Jr., Miriam T. Brown, Martha Mott Cooper, and Linda S. Bowers. Let us pray together. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. lesson this afternoon comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22. Hear now the word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. 
The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Psalm 34 was written by a person who had undergone hard, difficult times, as we just heard. Someone who was beset by fears, but who was delivered from them. Someone who cried out to God and God heard those cries and saved them. And because of God's faithfulness during both the good times and the bad, prosperity and adversity, the psalmist had a joy in the Lord and wants others to have that joy also. The psalmist wants us to get to know God better so we can experience the goodness of God for ourselves, so that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. On this All Saints Day, we remember all of our saints who have died this year. Now when we say saint, we don't mean a perfect person, but rather a person who has the type of faith that allows them to truly trust in God. A person who has this type of faith believes that God will be with them in their time of need. Their assurance of God's presence gives them the ability to persevere even against formidable obstacles. They know that no matter what their circumstances, God loves them and is with them, helping them to both endure and overcome. They have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. This definition of saint is a very apt description of those who joined the church triumphant this year. None of the saints we remember today had an easy life. They all faced challenges. They ranged in age from 51 to 102. One was a World War II veteran. Another was a veteran of the Korean War. Some battled cancer, others were beset by cognitive impairment. They were artists and nature lovers, number crunchers and teachers, social workers, surgeons, and administrators. Many loved the beach or the lake, and they all enjoyed being outside in God's creation. They were sports fans, both Gamecocks and Tigers, puzzle workers and travelers. They were sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, siblings and friends. The variety in these lives reminds me of the diversity in the family of God, where we all have unique gifts and talents, yet God weaves us together to create something beautiful and holy. These saints have woven their unique talents into the fabric of Washington Street as part of the on ongoing legacy of this congregation. Their example encourages us to weave our threads into the fabric of Washington Street. Now this diversity is essential for the church. Yet even amidst the diversity, there is one characteristic that the saints share a strong relationship with the Lord. Each of our saints had the type of faith in God that our psalmist did. That faith was based on having a relationship with God. Now, I don't know the exact process by which each of our saints cultivated their relationship with God, but I do know that those, that involved learning about God by reading the Bible and then discussing it 
either in Sunday school or in small groups or just with friends. It also included talking with God in prayer and worshiping God, both in a church, but also anywhere they would find themselves. And it involved building trust by relying on God in little things so that when the bad times came, they had that trust in the Lord. They were tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. They understood that walking with God did not mean they would have an easy life or walk on a clear, straight path, but that God would give them the strength to persevere and overcome all the obstacles that they would encounter. They knew that in hard times they could call out to God who would hear them and be with them, whether they were battling Nazis or cancer or dementia. They knew that they didn't fight alone. God was with them. Because they were all struck by God's power and majesty, love and care, they could find joy and fulfillment in all of life's experiences. They trusted God and celebrated God's protection and provision. None of them would have been able to survive the things that they faced without the strength that comes from a relationship with the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah says in the 40th chapter, the 31st verse, those who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Those words characterize our saints. They courageously lived the lives that God called them to. When they faced hardships, they maintained their strength by trusting in God. Their lives are a witness to God's love and faithfulness. They were able to live and love and help others because they had the joy that comes from knowing that they were beloved children of God who were never left to fight their battles on their own. So they kept running the race with perseverance, living life to the best of their abilities until it was time to go home and be with their Lord. Now they weren't always vocal about their faith, but they didn't have to be. Their lives were a testimony to what was truly important, a relationship with God that's deep and abiding and does not depend on outside circumstances but is forged in the fire of adversity and becomes, becomes stronger because of the difficulties endured. Their witness encourages us, just like those who have gone before us, that God will be with us when times get bad, when the storms of life come and threaten to overwhelm us. Their witness shows us that God is faithful. So we celebrate their lives in Christ this afternoon. We celebrate their witness and their legacy because they show us how to keep running the race with perseverance. Because God is always renewing the strength of those who trust in the Lord. They show us that a relationship with God is of utmost importance and will give us peace and assurance even in times of crisis. And they show us that being filled with the love of God enables us to both love and serve others. Watching how they live their lives gives us a wonderful picture of what walking with the Lord looks like. Their examples encourage us to get to know God better, to have a strong and vital relationship with the Lord, and to taste and see for ourselves that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God.
our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, as we come together as God's people, we confess our sins to one another and to God. Please join me now in our prayer of confession. We'll begin with a moment of silence and we'll end with a pardon. Let us pray together. Almighty and loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled the world to yourself. Help us now to be reconciled with one another, that again we might dwell in the warmth of your love. Inspire us with your Holy Spirit to put aside the cloak of pride and put on Christ, that we might forgive and be forgiven, and to taste and see your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and granting pardon. Amen. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. Holy God, we gather to exalt your name. We come to give thanks and to celebrate our place in your church with the communion of the saints. In Christ, we share with them one body and one hope. We gather to bless your name, for you are the creator of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham and Sarah, the God of Miriam and Moses, Joshua and Deborah, the God of Ruth and David, the priests and the prophets. You are the God of Mary and Joseph, the apostles and the martyrs, the God of our mothers and our fathers, the God of our sisters and brothers in the church here on earth and in the church triumphant. You are holy, and your Son, Jesus Christ, is our Lord. Through his suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised him from the dead, and now Jesus reigns with you in glory. You poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant, sharing in one body and in one hope. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And on the night when he had broken the bread, he gave thanks. 
He took the cup and he gave thanks to you again and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. And now I invite you to take the bread and the juice that you have brought from home and to prepare it to be received. You might take the bread from the bottom if you're using the cups here. Does anyone have need for some? If you raise your hand, we'll bring them. If you raise your hand if you need one. Okay, good. And now if you would just simply hold them in your hand while we have the blessing. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make each portion to be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we might be for the world the body of Christ, sharing your life, your love, and your hope with all the world. Let us now share in the feast together. And now, if you would join me in the prayer of response, print it in your bulletin. Holy, Holy God, God, renew our communion with, with all your saints. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May we follow the course set by all the saints who have gone before us. May we run the race with perseverance. And may we get to know God so that we too can say that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.